Hello guys, today I'm back with another Rust Plus Touri app and in this video I'm going to walk you through how I created a simple media player app. But before we get started guys, over the next couple of weeks I'll be uploading some more Rust content. So if you're interested in Rust, do me a favor and uh, hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's get started. So before we take a look at the code, let me just demo the app for you real quick so you can see how it works. Here I've got a list of songs and I can move between tracks by clicking um, either one of these two navigation buttons. I've kept it simple because a lot of what you see here just really happens on the front end and I didn't want to spend too much time focusing there. I want to show you more of the back end and how I got the mp3 files to work because there were some issues there. Now let me walk you through the Rust code. So in Rust I have a single Turi command called get songs and this function essentially returns a uh, an array of songs and I do that by reading through my music folder and checking for um, mp3 files and once I have an mp3 file I then use a third-party library called um, id3 to get the id3 tags from the mp3 file so I'm really after the title the artist and the cover image as well with the cover image the cover image is in, in bytes, so what I do is I use another library called Base64. So here's the, um, these libraries that I'm using, ID3 and Base64. And I essentially encode the, the picture, which is in bytes, into a Base64. So then I can save that and send it to the front end. Probably not a, an efficient way to do it, but it's the easiest way. So once I've have these details, once I have these details, I put that into a, a a struct called song, and the song gets pushed into a vector, and the vector then gets returned to the front end when it's called when the get songs is called from um, the front end. So as you can see, guys, there's not much really happening here. I mean, apart from um, you know loads of unwrapping going on here. Um, you know, it's 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 really not um, you know the most complicated code to uh, to to uh, sort of write. So how do we call this function from the front end? Let me go to the front end code and I'll show you how that works. So here I have the an init function which is essentially called. Um, when the page is load and this is the function the invoke function that calls the get songs the rust or the Turi command and um, This invoke function is essentially exposed to the to the page via the window object So there's a variable that you need to set in your Turi config Let me see if I can bring that up for you real quick so you can see what that looks like So I believe it's um, Somewhere down the bottom. It's actually changed um, from version one. So this is the uh, property that you need to set to true if you want the Turi um, API to be available by the window um, object. So if this is set to true, you'll have um, you'll have the uh, Turi API exposed by the window object and you're after this invoke function. And the invoke function essentially allows you to call the Rust um, function um, from the back end, which is annotated as a Turi command and don't forget that um, all the functions have also need to be included in your invoke handl handler here right so now on to the part of the code that I struggled with and I'm going to run the app um, so you can see where I had these problems so initially I thought that I could provide an absolute path to the audio element and play the mp3 file directly off my system but that didn't work and i'll show you why that didn't work so let me bring up the uh, dev tool and you can see when i try to do this i got this um, exception saying that um, the operation is not supported so after reading up a, a quite a bit i realized that um, at least for WebKit, um, I'm not able to provide. Um, I'm not able to load the MP3 directly. So the alternative is to stream the MP3 file using an HTTP server. That meant embedding an HTTP server into the music player. So 
let's take a look at that. So here I'm using another Rust library called Tiny HTTP, and it's a very small library for spawning up a, a HTTP server. And um, you know you can use it for other types of projects, but I'm using it here to load and serve the MP3 file. And what I've done is I've just um, wrapped it around a thread so that um, the server doesn't uh, block the main UI. So now that I have this server streaming the MP3 file, let's give it another go. So I've got this um, sort of a Goldilocks sort of code going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this code out and show you what I did next, which is to load the MP3 file from the HTTP server. So now you can see that um, switching over to an HTTP server worked, but uh, you'll also notice that it's showing up as a live broadcast, and that's because it's streaming that song as it uh, sort of downloads it. And that would be okay if I was building an app like Spotify where I was streaming one song after another. But um, I want to build a music player app where I can listen to a song and seek to different parts of the song, you know, and um, also look at the, you know, the duration of the song. And I can't get that information or I'm not able to seek to a different part of the song if I'm just streaming the, the, the file, um, you know, across from the HTTP server. So... That meant I had to use an entirely different approach. And so what I ended up doing was downloading the MP3 file as a blob. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So let's comment out this line of code now and um, uncomment out this final, um, final code that seemed to work for me. So what I'm doing is I'm just fetching the MP3 file as, with a reg, as a regular fetch API with a regular fetch API and I'm fetching it as a blob and then I'm using create object URL to create that as a object URL which I can provide to the audio um, to the audio element and that sort of fixed the problem so I'm going to run it again and you can see how it's changed from live broadcast to um, using uh, the MP3 player as it's meant to be used so just give it a little while it, it does take a while for it to compile so now you can see that um, it no longer says live broadcast I'm able to seek um, in the song to any position I want and it's also showing the duration of the song so those are essentially the three different methods methods that, that I used the first was when I tried to use an absolute path, which didn't work. I'm not entirely sure if it would be the same problem if you were on a Mac or a, a PC, but at least on, on my Ubuntu system using WebKit, that, that didn't seem to work. And, um, you know, the, the streaming, that would be okay if I wanted to develop a Spotify app, something similar to Spotify where I was, um, you know, streaming one song after another. But um, because this is just a regular uh, music player app, the only way that I, I found at least was to download the MP3 file as a blob and then use that to, um, to uh, play, the, uh, play the file. So guys, that's, um, that's how I created this um, media player app. It doesn't really, you know, from the UI point of view, I'm not a... UI, I'm not a front-end developer, so I've done the best I could to sort of put this together. I'm sure you guys will be able to do far better than this. Um, and, you know, I'm missing a few features from, from the player. Um, if I were to continue, I'd add other options to it. Um, but uh, this is as far as I'm going to probably take it. I just put it together so that I could uh, show you guys how easy it is to put together a media player app using Rust and Turi. So if you like this video, guys, once again, I would appreciate it if you um, could, um, you know, do the usual stuff like subscribe, that kind of thing. And um, hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much, guys.